The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. Welcome everybody back! We're bound to this video game to try to figure out where the horror is in it. I'm told that I'm close to nearing Act 1, to which I respond, THERE ARE MULTIPLE ACTS?! It's already Sunday! I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. Sorry, I ran over my foot. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it still didn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There is no doubt that she'll open up a little bit, but when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. By putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard anything from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've always worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori feeling aside when she might need me? Huh. I've decided to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's house like we're family. This house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's upstairs in her room. It's already strange. Her room's not... Not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Whew! I was waiting for it. I was expecting something to be crazy. Hi, Frosty! I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? I guess you're right. It's been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as always. it's always been. Just clothes everywhere. She's got a little cow and a little the angry bird. I don't know. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations she had for years now. <laughs> if you come over more often, it would be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Are you supposed to meet, see Yuri today? Yeah, but wait, how did you know that? Sayori already left by the time we decided the last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? I guess that's true. What about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep! There's more silence between us. Sayuri so stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you're doing. After you left on Friday, when something was wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Frosty. Eh? Why can't I just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make up that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. Uh, you wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But... This is my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. I don't... I don't think that at all! Eh <laughs> Sayori... I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah, uh, ah, Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Frosty. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. S seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Frosty? Guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had a really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm so late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy in carrying a waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I'm in shock too. Can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible Sayori kept this form from me the entire time, like I've known her? 
Does she really want so badly for me just to think about her? Why, sorry? Eh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It only feels like I've been betrayed as you close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could have to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Frosty. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have had to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels like nice sometimes, but it feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I want it so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discover something else too, seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club. Feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why, that's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. Aha, you're right, I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayuri. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Frosty, there's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could like be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears shake down Sayori's face. I made you join a literature club because I was selfish. I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, once again, Sayori's sh shoulders I grab. This time I pull her in tight embrace. Uh, Frosty? Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Frosty, Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arm remained at their sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Frosty, I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do... Then you'd better tell me. I'd get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Frosty. The only times I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary too. Sayori let lets me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like me to spend it all with you? Um, uh, it's what I want. I promise. I, I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sorry, wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all the days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But... It's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Yuri shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I'll look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayuri and exit her house. On my home, I find myself feeling uneasy, but it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over, too. I think Sayuri is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. Okay, back to happy moments. That was a little depressing. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Gary? Uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here 10 minutes ago, but I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You also you could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and heard more on my way home. I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it 
Anyways, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. Take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. So clean. Uh, <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so that's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no, I would really be embarrassed if my room was a mess while you were here. Uh, well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah, uh, that would have been even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I snatch Yuri's wrist, which has the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. It's where I keep my textbooks on calculus. You wouldn't find it interesting at all. She puts both her hands firmly on her lap as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Uh, yeah. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enchantments. Atmospheric enchantments? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I know you plan on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests far away place. Although, many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. <laughs> intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? N no, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Your smile is gently clearing and enjoying yourself. She again reaches in her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh, yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we cast the fasten paper on the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me or is she more relaxed when she's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Frosty. You can write any character you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, uh, alright. Sitting in the floor together, two of us go to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she dead and reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Ah, uh, well, embarrassed looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. You're whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know. If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. All right. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. She's in a knife. That's where it's going to get weird. It, it wasn't going to start at the freaking. No, it's not going to be the. Pre She's in the knife. Yeah, that's a thing. Maybe it's just a hobby. I don't know. Who would Who would I be to know that it's a hobby? But if she's in the knives, that's a thing. All right, I'm going back. All right. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on paper. Or you could have brought in scissors. And had no problem cutting anything. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them on all side by side. Looks better than I expected. It will be very effective as a door curtain. Looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy paint tablets. 
Ah. What? That's right. One of my items Yuri asked me was to buy a kit of watercolor paint tablets. Okay. I'm following. We'll need about six cups of water to put each tablet in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it'll be diluted. Taking your advice, I decided to get small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them in a plate to catch up to drips. Yuri? Yes? I come to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dripping them into the cups. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner. Starting with the colors from sunrise and daytime to sunset to nighttime. Once it dries, it'll be an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium in front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it will be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel the opposite side so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush to add a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like art class project we had back then. It's relaxing. Uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to yourself, For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. Just like when I can spend time with other persons. Uh, even if it's someone, something simple, someone simple, like reading. It doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. I'm just having fun next time we make things feels a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over to Banner to grab some unused paintbrush, but I move the same direction, causing my head to bump hers. Ah, sorry. Yuri reels back and quickly lifts my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, no, I'm not hurt. I'm just startled. It's just startled me, that's all. It's simply adorable. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paint on your face and neck. There's something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out in small towel and then dample it in with hot water. I return my needle back down in front of her. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with a towel. Ah, is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I started to re retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah! Keeping my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through, slightly parted lips. What's happening? Is this aroma of jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist, sending a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Uh, Yuri slowly pu pulls away. S sorry, I'm feeling a little lightheaded today. Yuri didn't mean to space out. Uh, it's fine. The moment is over, and as soon as it began, Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling a night sky with white dots and it looks like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. So what you could do for stars is this own old like uh, uh, Bob Ross thing. You see, take a fan brush and dip it in white and sort of like dilute it a little bit. But then you take your finger and kind of flick it down. You get some nice white stars going across a night sky. Bob Ross! I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Ah, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but it won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here, then have you bring it in in the morning. 
I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Wah! Yeah, you say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Ah, oh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Yeah. So you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we'd have extra time after finishing work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself, I, I think it would be too impression irresponsible, it's my fault, Ir irresponsible is the word, not impressionable, of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be a f more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. It's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, it shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all the things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she really gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean that it's the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today... It's fine that we didn't have much time that we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can just come over and we can hang out somewhere. I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply shies back from Anyway, you, you know what I'm trying to say, so you're very thoughtful, Prosty. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? Um... But I don't even get a chance as Yuri suddenly pulls back. S Sayori! Eh? Uh, hi, Frosty. Sayori, just now we weren't. Heh. <laughs> it's okay, Frosty. I just stopped by to say hi. Um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Aw, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll get together at the festival tomorrow, so, so that's fine, right? Of course! Sayori beams. Yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Clearly embarrassed. Yuri hurries off. Sorry, waves goodbye after her. Sorry, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Ah, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here to see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start falling down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Frosty? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. It would be much better if I could just disappear. Sorry, don't say that. It's true, Frosty. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori? What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this is, isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. Something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I want to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But Sayori looks away. Put a hand on her shoulder as I reassure her. I'm scared, Frosty. I'm really scared. What are you scared about, Sayori? I'm scared that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori. It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Frosty, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wor wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now, and that's why I'm going to give it to you. You messing with me, game. You messing with me. 
the term I love you can mean a lot of things. Like I got I got some bros. I say I love you, bro, and that's like that's like bro love. But I'm like I'm talking like not like not like not like like I love my fiance. That's a big thing. That's a big difference. Ah, cause we're trying to do the the Yuri playthrough. Like this is so hard. Like I I know I'm gonna end up re replaying this multiple times. <sighs> Damn it! You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult things right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back to the way they were. I... I see. Sawyer so forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. Ha. <laughs> Is that what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Sorry, it's okay. It's just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. So I should just get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing, you're also right that I wanted to go back the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Frosty. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So, Sayuri smiles and finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sayuri looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayuri? I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why well, am feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more that I could have done. The most I can do is support through, uh, Sayuri through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayuri's feeling as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if she's doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sorry will always be my dearest friend, and I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, expected this one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone, so I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should nearly be complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently roll it up and take it with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited to, for it to be over so I can spend some time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Frosty! You're the first one here! All right. All right. Ah. Uh... This is so weird. It's like I can't touch base on this at the moment because I don't want to say too much and and, 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 and like come up with like jump to conclusions because I'm playing this without the idea that any conclusions will be drawn. So we're going to leave it there. I, I, I want to know what your guys' opinion about this so far is. I know a lot of you are really trying to get me to finish this first act and I want to finish this for you, but I don't want to extend these, uh, extend these, uh, uh, these clips out too far. So this was a lot to take in. This is going to be a little bit of a longer episode. But thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you very much for following along. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit that like button because it makes me love it even more when you do that. But thank you guys very much for watching. As usual, as always, my friends, stay frosty and game on.